Every physiological system in your body, your immune system, everything changes when you go to sleep. 2,400 years ago, Hippocrates talked about the correlations and curative aspects of sleep for infection. No one studied it until we did. Sleep loss deranges metabolism, increasing the risk for sleep apnea and type 2 diabetes, creating inflammatory responses that increase risk for cardiovascular disease. As we ask the question, what exactly is it in brain that sleeps? What we think sleeps are bits and pieces of the brain. Sleep, like politics, is local. Once you know that, then you can look at disease states, for example, narcolepsy. If we understand what part of the brain is awake and what parts sleep, then we'll be able to target drugs to the parts of the brain that need to be asleep if they're awake. Because if people don't get sleep, their performance degrades and you happen to be driving and you fall asleep behind the wheel, uh, that can have immediate and catastrophic health consequences, not just for you, but for other people as well. Trying to image the state of the frontal cortex. You just simply shine the equivalent of a laser pointer onto your head, look at the output, and you'll have a real-time measure of your performance status. It'll have real applications to truck drivers, airline pilots, soldiers, and so on. We've done it in rats. The only problem is rats don't drive trucks or fly airplanes. Right now, we manage industries with hours of service regulations, trucking, uh, commercial aviation. These don't really take into account the full weight of circadian, the ry rhythm in human performance. What you want is fatigue risk management not prescriptive, brittle hours of service regulation. And we are going to develop a fatigue risk management tool that would aid in scheduling and developing rosters. Sleep is the last big thing that happens biologically that we don't know for sure what its function is. So it's a big unanswered question out there. 